Go, it's center. All right, well, very good morning, uh, afternoon, slash, whatever time it is in your side of the world. We're going to call my mom in a few minutes, and it's morning, so I'm delaying as much as I can because it's 7 o'clock in Miami. My name is Richard. I want to welcome you to Let's Talk Tech, which is our first day, and you're going to notice first day, it's just going to be you guys. And the second day, we're not going to fit in here. And the third day, the other people on the aisles. But I like to do things the first day because I like to get started early. Now, how many of you have sailed with me before? How many of you have sailed with my fatter brother before? <laughs> His name was Richard, but he was 50 pounds heavier. It's the same person. Everybody comes to me and goes, goes, Richard, I saw this guy who had your same sense of humor before, but didn't look anything like you. I was like, okay, so sorry. Uh, but people usually don't realize who I am until the end, because they're like, ah. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about other things. But I want to let you know what today is about. Now, the name of this class used to be Travel Tech 101. And people thought it was really intro. It wasn't really intro. But how this class came about, this is called Let's Talk Tech, and today we're going to be talking tech. We're going to talk all kinds of tech. Tech that takes batteries, tech that doesn't take batteries, uh, tech that doesn't want to cooperate with me and show me what I want to see on the screen right now. Um, let's see what kind of tech we're going to talk about. Uh, yeah, angry tech. Uh, so we're going to talk about all kinds of different tech today. Uh, let me just get this guy behaving, and we're going to get this up on the screen. But I want to give you the origins of this class, which is interesting. Oh, there we go. Air server. I'm going to give you the origins of this class, um, which is very interesting. So I actually came up with this class when I was a passenger on the Celebrity Equinox. Because you know what crew members do when they go on vacation? Well, crazy crew members, they go on cruise ships. Uh, <laughs> it's a cheap vacation. I live in Miami, so I just say, I want to go on a cruise this weekend. I show up at the port, whatever's open. Richie jumps on. It's, it's really, I wound up working when I went on vacation with the Equinox. But what I did is every day I went to, I, I was going to go with my mom and my dad and my sister, and there was an emergency at home, and the bathroom flooded, so they had to stay home for the insurance people and all that. So I'm going on the ship on my own. This is a passenger. This is the first time I ever had a celebrity room case. And it got demagnetized just as many times as yours did. Uh, <laughs> the good news is, as of tomorrow, Constellation is going to fix that problem. Well, we're talking tech, it's very interesting. Constellation is putting in uh, tap room keys, which don't have the magnetic, magnetic swipe on them. They're gonna be going into act they're gonna go into action tomorrow, and that's also gonna be what's on the edge class as well. So when you're talking tech, and the cool thing is when the edge comes out, you won't even need room keys. You won't need to carry a room key, you just need to carry your phone, which is pretty cool. But that's another story for another time. So I went around and I asked people all kinds of questions they want to know about tech. I wasn't working on the ship at that time, I was just a passenger with them. And that's what this class is all about. It's about talking different types of tech, different things with tech. Now, my two little friends that I keep with me for the entire cruise are these two buttons. You're going to become very acquaintance with them. When we talk about something that is not going to be around in the future, we're going to press the no button. Some examples of things that the no button will be pressed for is AOL. No. Yahoo. No. No. No! Hotmail! Last time, no. We'll get into why that is, but if any of you have an AOL or a Yahoo account, as of June 8th, you won't. So, yeah, they're shutting down. Yeah, they're shutting down on June 8th. We'll get into that a bit later on. Huh? Someone just, I, I've been saying they're going to be shutting down forever, and someone sent me an email they got from Yahoo saying that they're changing ownership, they're going over to Verizon, and they have the rights to delete all of your information uh, starting on June 8th. We'll get to that. I've got a solution for that problem. Don't worry about it. But uh, now we have the button we use a lot less often. Why not? Yes, absolutely. Right away. Sure thing. Yeah. So the goal is to move us all from no. to sure. that's the whole idea. The whole idea of the next uh, 13 days or so classes we're going to do is to move us from no to yes. And the first thing we need to talk about is how many of you in this room are on Airplane mode right now. Okay. So we gotta give you a yes. Because of course. everybody in this room should be on airplane mode right now. And I want to talk to you about why. If you have a smartphone and you're at sea on a cruise ship, you need to have your device in airplane mode. Have we all heard of airplane mode before? 
Do you know the purpose of airplane mode? Well, the original purpose of airplane mode was to have a mode you could put your phone on when you were on an airplane. airplane. And then what happened is Bluetooth headphones started getting popular and all these other things started getting popular. Then they put Wi-Fi in airplanes and different things like that. When you turn on airplane mode, what airplane mode turns off is your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your cellular, your FM radio that's in your phone. It turns off all of these different things inside of your device when you turn on airplane mode. Now, a lot of people will notice I'm showing this with an iPhone. I forgot to mention this. I do also use Android as well. I've got an, I an Android in my left pocket most of the time, and I've got an iPhone in my right pocket. The only thing I don't do is BlackBerry. Anybody do BlackBerry still? Where's my BlackBerry person? They're usually Canadians, and they apologize. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I still use BlackBerry, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry if you're Canadians. That was my bad Canadian accent. But uh, airplane mode. So airplane mode is at the top of all of our settings. If you have an iPhone, if you have an Android, whatever you have, the top thing on there is airplane mode. What airplane mode does is it makes sure that you don't get charges from your cell phone carrier. I can tell you, none of you in this room, whether you think you do or not, have a plan that covers calls when the ship's at sea as part of your plan. If you think you have that plan, the medical center's on deck too. They offer psychiatric services. Here's the important thing to understand. When you are outside of your home country, when you're on a cruise ship, when you have not pre-set up a data plan with your cell phone company, you need to have your device on airplane mode. Now the interesting thing about airplane mode is once you turn on airplane mode, you can go back and turn back on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. A lot of people think, okay, I turn on airplane mode, it kills everything. Look, they use the side door. They're, they're so professional. They got the side door there. Uh, said crew only. You walk through another door and said crew only. I said, I don't care. I'm going to just walk through those two crew only doors. Uh, they're basically crew by now. It's fine. Uh, but uh, airplane mode turns off all of the connections, turns off all the ability to go. So if you don't turn Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on, again, your phone is a brick. So that's the idea is you want to turn on airplane mode and then turn Wi-Fi and Bluetooth back on. But here's the question, well, what can you do when your device is in airplane mode? And the answer to that question is almost everything. <laughs> almost everything. The one thing you can't generally do when your device is in airplane mode is make a phone call. Or if you use an Android device, send a text message. But elsewise, here's what's becoming very interesting. If you remember back in the day, the big thing about cell phones was making phone calls and sending text messages. Hopefully we've all evolved beyond that, and now we're using email, we're using Facebook, we're using all of these different things like that. As weird as it sounds, the idea of the phone call has become almost uh, irrelevant. I don't even have the phone app. Most of you look at your phone, you have the phone app on the bottom of the phone, or the side of the phone. I have the phone app buried inside a folder, inside a folder, inside a folder, inside a folder. To be completely honest, I don't even know where the phone app is. But here's the thing. My phone is on airplane mode, I'm connected to Wi-Fi, and I have cell phone service. Huh? <laughs> now, some of you, until a couple years ago, you used to, there was a word that was in everybody's vernacular, and it's not as much around anymore. You'll notice it's kind of died off. Everybody used to say Skype, 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 and Skype's kind of, Skype's kind of died off because what Microsoft has done, and I was having this discussion earlier in Michael's pub, is that Microsoft is actually not going to be a consumer company in 10 years' time. Microsoft's not going to sell directly to you. Probably the last consumer product that Microsoft will have will be Office. Microsoft is going towards the business enterprise. So they've taken Skype and they've moved it from a consumer product to much more of a business product. We actually use Skype on board the ship now to communicate between ships, but from a corporate capacity. It's called Skype for Business. That's the main reason they bought Skype. It's not the consumer versions of Skype. Well, what's really replaced Skype for U.S. people, we'll get to non-U.S. people in a minute, for U.S. people is something called Wi-Fi call-out. Now, why this is only available in the United States is because they've made deals with emergency 911 services that, hey, if you dial 911 and we can't tell where you are, we're going to send them to your normal house. If that makes sense. If you, we can, so all of your devices in this room are capable of doing it. It just has to come down to your phone company and your country switching it on. But even though, I'll turn this sideways again so you can see, I'm on airplane mode, I can make a very, I gotta see what time it is, a very early call to my mom, 7.15 in the morning, she's gonna tell me, uh, but she might be up. So I open up the phone application, let's call mom, 
Now I want you to understand, right now I'm calling mom on her cell phone from my cell phone number while I'm in airplane mode. Calling her phone. Hello, mother. Yeah, I checked what time it is. You're awake? I guess you are. Now. Did the duck toll her wake you up? You have a puppy that woke you up. Not your job anymore. Not my job. Okay. So I don't wake you up. The puppy wakes you up. They're going to see the puppy a bit later. You know, I have to tell you, someone, I, I, okay. did, I did a whole class earlier today, and someone said, there was someone who was teaching this class a few years ago that was a lot fatter than you. And I was like, thanks. Uh, so, uh, okay, mother. Well, you better go find that person. Uh, okay, bye. Okay, bye. Can't find him anymore. So here's the cool thing. I just made that call while on airplane mode, which is where these things start to get very interesting. So I can actually make a call while I happen to be on airplane mode when I have that. That's something called Wi-Fi calling. It is just available for the US carriers right now, but it will be expanding to a lot of the carriers later. You can do it on iPhone 6 or later, or a Samsung Galaxy S5, oh no, Galaxy S6 or later, to give you an idea. On any of those devices, you can actually do Wi-Fi calling. Is but there an app for that? No, it's actually right, built right into the phone. I'll show you where it is. If I go in, I have to turn off airplane mode to get there. I'm going to do it very quickly. And I go down to where it says phone, and you'll see something that says Wi-Fi calling, and it says on. And I just need to turn it on, and I need to tell it my address where I live. So if I were to right now, I'm not going to, dial 911, tell them there was an emergency, they would see that the emergency was at home in Miami. Because if it can't find your location, it has to do, the whole rules behind this have to do with emergency 911 services. That's the entire the entire roles, the entire rules behind this is based on E911 services. But if you don't use that, what is another option? Now, what if I told you there was a single application that I use generally to replace my text messages, my phone calls, my video chats, and my voice chats, and it has absolutely nothing to do with my cell phone company? You'd go, you're crazy. You'd go, you're crazy. The main way I communicate with people is via, and I don't want you to get afraid right now, you're gonna get afraid for a few seconds, but it's via an app called Facebook Messenger. Not Facebook, Facebook Messenger. Two completely different applications. Now, Facebook back in the day used to have Facebook Messenger, I can't turn it sideways, integrated with inside of it. Oh look, someone took a picture of a toilet. Yep. Uh, does anybody, can anybody answer, what are these things sticking into the toilet bowl? Any idea what that's for? Okay, go. I, I don't know either. Someone commented, oh, I don't want to open that. But Facebook used to have something right here called Facebook Messenger. And what they did is they moved Facebook Messenger outside of the Facebook app and into another app. Now I need to see, uh, who can, okay, this person I had a pretty reasonable conversation with. So I need to go into a conversation that you can actually see, but Facebook Messenger you can go in and you can write a message if you want to. So I can go to Facebook Messenger and I can write a message right in Facebook Messenger like a text message. I can also go ahead, let me get my assistant here. This one's a safe one. I can also go in and I can send pictures. Have any of you ever sent pictures as an email attachment before? And how long does it take to send one picture as an email attachment? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and a video of 20. I'm now sending 20 pictures in a video right inside of, give it a second. I've now sent 20 pictures in a video right inside of Facebook Messenger. And that's sent to my assistant. Yeah, it's done. It's done. What you've got to realize is, in the world of technology nowadays, there are essentially four companies that are innovating and big in technology. Can someone name one of them? Facebook, I'll give you that. Give me the other three. Google. Google. Apple. Apple. Yeah, number four. Is that number four? It's an interesting one. Amazon. Oh. Amazon. If you are using services that are from any of those other companies, you are using things that are years and years and years old. The only companies really innovating in the space are those. And I've actually just sent all those photos and all those videos. Now, not only can I do that, if I wanted to, I can also, he's not online right now, and I'm not going to bother my mom again. I can also make a phone call or a video call directly from Facebook Messenger. 
to any other person that has Facebook Messenger. Here's the interesting thing to understand. When we can connect through Facebook Messenger, do we need phone numbers anymore? Do we need cell phone networks anymore? Because we have Wi-Fi. Do we need any of that? A lot of people think it's absolutely crazy, but I'm going to tell you within a couple of years, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, 3, O2, Orange, which I know Orange no longer exists. Someone told me that Orange in the UK is gone. All these cell phone companies will be gone. Yes, they will. Yeah, they're all going to be gone. Because you're going to look at the top of your phone, and you know what it's going to say? It's going to say Google, Apple, Facebook, or Amazon. Those are going to be your cell phone providers. As these companies. Now, here's a perfect example in the US. I know in the UK, it's very expensive to get truly unlimited data. You can get it from some of the providers. You can get it from three. You can get it from a couple of those. In the US, every major carrier now has unlimited calls, unlimited data, unlimited text. So when they have that, and they all have that, do any of them have a unique product? So they're just battling in the basis of price now, correct? Even in the UK, nobody really has a unique product. They're battling the basis of price. When people are just battling in price and no one has a unique product, what happens to the overall market for that product? It goes down. When that market goes down beyond a certain amount, you're going to have people leaving that market. And you know who's going to be picking up the scraps? Google, Apple, Amazon, Facebook. That's the real truth. When we're talking tech, those are the companies of the future, but I can go in, I, like I said, I just sent him a whole bunch of pictures, a whole bunch of videos. He hasn't received them yet, but I can go in and I can have a chat with someone directly from Facebook. So I can make a call, I can make a video call, I can make anything, and this is where a lot of things are going to replace. Now, some of you are going to be hesitant to these things, and that's why some of these cell phone companies are going to still stay alive and charge you a fortune, because these things we're talking about are proverbially going to be free. That's what's cool. How many of you ever paid money to Facebook before? How many of you ever paid money to Google before? They are primarily services companies. Out of those I talked about, Google, Facebook, we pay money to Amazon, but what you don't realize is Amazon doesn't make any money sending things to our door. Amazon, I'm giving you an answer for a later class, Amazon is the number one cloud service provider in the world. Every website in the world is pretty much hosted by Amazon. That's how they make money. They don't make money in any other way. So I think that's where it gets interesting is that's how a company like that would go ahead and make money. So when you're talking about Facebook, when you're talking about all those other ones, another entrant that I don't personally think it's going to exist on its own anymore is Netflix. We've probably all heard of Netflix before. <laughs> now, something's happening in the United States that I think is very interesting. And why I talk about it in the United States is most stuff that happens with tech in the US, does it eventually make it to the other countries as well? Yeah. Yes, it does. Right now in the United States, we have struck down something called net neutrality. Have any of you ever heard of that phrase before? So, US people, you likely have Comcast providing your internet at home, or someone like that. Canadian people, you have Bell, Shaw, Telus, someone like that. UK people, you probably have uh, BT, correct? Is that assumption? Net neutrality is something that was brought under, uh, it was brought to a thing saying that all websites should be treated equally. What that means is it shouldn't be a barrier to entry for other companies to do different things. Here's what's happened. Net neutrality has been struck down. So does BT have an on-demand product where you pay and you watch movies and you do different things like that? Yes. Comcast has an on-demand product. All these companies have an on-demand product. They are of the nature to make sure their on-demand product works the best. Do you know who's going to suffer from things like that, though? Netflix and other companies like that are going to suffer from things like that. So what do you think is going to happen in the long run? Someone is going to buy Netflix and make a competitor to your home internet service, to your content. So what's going to happen is it's going to become harder and harder to watch things like Netflix and YouTube at home in the next few years, in the US as well as in the UK, as well as everywhere like that, because these companies don't want you doing that. They want you to watch their content. They want you to watch their content. One of the really cool things about Netflix why I mentioned Netflix, and something a lot of people don't know about Netflix nowadays, is did you know you can actually download things from Netflix now? So what's really cool, if you have a Netflix account or you have a friend who wants to share their Netflix account with you, uh, let's be honest, how many of you have a, have a Netflix account? How many of you have your own Netflix account? That's a much uh, smaller number, to be completely honest. My sister, my mom, my friend, all the other island managers in the fleet, they all have my Netflix account. <laughs> so many people have my Netflix account. But I can actually go in, if I have my Netflix here, and I can actually download things from Netflix now. 
So let's say available to download, and even when you don't have an internet connection, if you download things from Netflix, you can watch those things from Netflix, which is really cool. I can't turn it sideways to show you what's going on. But I can actually click on anything, and I can download those things by hitting, there's during a lot of different, di next to a lot of different things, there's little download buttons, and I hit that little download button, and I can actually download directly from Netflix, which is pretty cool. You can also do the same thing on YouTube now, but you do need to subscribe to something called YouTube Red, which runs about the same price as Netflix, and you can download YouTube things to view when you are not connected to the internet. But what we're going to be talking about tomorrow, I want to talk a little bit futuristic to give you an idea about tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about the camera. So at 1 o'clock in here tomorrow, we're going to be talking about the camera on your device. Go ahead and take your device out. If you've got an iPhone or an iPad or something like that, and I want you to go ahead and take a picture of me. I'm going to stand still. There's a reason for this, because I want to see how many of you are doing it correctly. I expected the front row to do it correctly. Okay, so keep your phone up in the, in the sky like you're taking a picture. I'm going to walk right up to you. You notice which button I have in my hand? Oh, yes. No! No! <laughs> no. You're okay. Someone else, I, I, I'm going to teach you. I'm not going to hate hey, okay? So you get the no. button too. <laughs> Here's the thing. No one ever told you the right way to take pictures, so I can't judge you for doing it the wrong way. I want to show you why this is. A lot of you took your device out and started taking pictures like this, uh -huh. mm -hmm. up and down. When you take a picture up and down, do you notice how much of the screen it fills out? Look at your finger. It fills a very small section of the screen. Now, I do not bring this up. I was, just, I was watching CNN at 1 o'clock in the morning last night. There were a lot of videos from what happened in Manchester, if, if you know this, the yeah. concert that happened. Um, and a lot of the videos were just tiny videos in the middle of the screen because natively, everybody takes pictures and videos in this way. The right way to take it, though, is this way. I'm going to show you why. So you want to take it sideways. Do you see how much more picture I get when I take it sideways? Yeah. When I take it sideways, I get a significantly bigger picture. I get significantly more information because a majority of the screens we look at, other than our phones, look like these screens, don't they? They're wider than they are tall. Your phone and your tablet are an exception that they are tall and they are wide, and they're done that way so you can ergonomic and ergonomically yeah. so you can ergonomically hold them. Now there are always exceptions to the rule. So if you have something like the leaning water bottle of Pisa, you can't take the leaning water bottle of Pisa that way. You have to take the leaning water bottle of Pisa that way to give you concept. But overall, when you're taking pictures, we should be taking it with our camera sideways. Now here's the important thing when we say our camera sideways, not only sideways, you were close right there, but your camera was at the bottom. If you take your picture like this and you email your picture to someone, it is going to show upside down. So you want to make sure that we have the camera at the top. So when we generally take pictures, we want to take pictures sideways with the camera at the top. Now some of you are sitting there, any of you have not Apple devices? Samsung devices, anything like that? If you have a not Apple device, you're going, well, my camera is in the middle. So it can never be at the top. The secret to camera at the top is charging port on your right. So the place where you plug your device in on your right. It's the same thing, camera at the top, charging port on the right. It's essentially the same thing. So we want to make sure that we hold our devices like this. Now, if you take a picture like this, and you send it to somebody, can they hit edit, rotate 90 degrees, edit, rotate 90 degrees, and it's fixed? Yes, they can. But imagine if you send someone a video like this. <laughs> Do any of you know how to rotate videos? Yeah. It's a lot more difficult to rotate a video. So remember, and I do this all the time, I will see people that are taking pictures out in the grand foyer, out in anywhere like that. I usually have one of these in my bag, and I just go up to them and go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and go, no. This one's a lot more useful than this one. I, I actually, I got these as gifts for people on the ship. I bought 24 of them when I, when I went out and I got it in Lisbon, and I got three of these. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of my yes buttons isn't working, the one I gave to my assistant, so uh, I'm going to gut a no button and take the speaker from the no button and put it inside the yes button and solder it together, but that's a story for another time. So we want to go ahead and we want to take it sideways with the camera at the top. When we're talking about cameras, we're talking about things like that. I want to bring a really cool gadget. I have to find it. I put it in my bag. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. 
This is my bag. I'm speaking of my bag, it's a cool bag. It's a bag that's actually got a solar panel built in on the back of it. So when you take it out, you can actually charge your devices. So it's kind of a cool gadget, but that's not what I want to show you. I want to show you something in the bag. Don't think there's enough stuff in the bag. This is really cool. This is a new newish product I just got. It's not something you're going to find in the US and the UK and anywhere like that yet because I got it right from China. It's called the Insta360, and it's a different type of camera. What it does is it takes pictures in 360 degrees. So you take it, snap it on the bottom of your phone. Give them a second. I like to show this because it's a really cool piece of kit. So it's got a camera lens here, and it's got a camera lens here as well. And I can go, boop, recording, so you can on camera, and it will actually take a full 360 degree picture. You see? When I have, oh, wait, let me go to the picture. Why are you live? There's the picture. So I stitched it together. Now, not only can I take pictures, I can take video as well. So I'm taking video. Here's the problem. Normal video is big. 360 degree video is four times bigger than normal video, just to give you a concept. It's four times bigger than normal size video, but I can look. So what's cool is you don't have to be taken out of your pictures. You're, you're in your pictures. So you actually have, the only thing you can't see is where the phone is. So you see it kind of blurs out where the phone is, but elsewise we're actually fully inside of here. But herein lies the question, okay, you've taken 360 degrees of video. Here's, whoa, that's me talking to myself. How do you watch it back? And here's where this comes very cool. This will show you how well through, thought through this company is. Yeah, just a camera, prototype, don't worry about it. It's all good. Uh, well, the only problem I have with it is the lens is kind of exposed, so I just put it on. <laughs> that was called good reflexes. But here's the cool thing. Okay, how do I look at it? What's cool is the box actually is a virtual reality viewer. So you take them right here, put your phone in the box, and then you're seeing two pictures. But I'll show you, take a look. You just have one picture. This shows right there. And you can look all the way around. I need that phone, so I can't pass it around to everybody to see it, because I need to see the next thing I'm going to do. But it's a really cool trick. You can go in, and you've got this. And this looks like tech of the future. Uh, what's funny is this is made in the exact same factory that the iPhone is made in, this camera. But what I think is going to happen is this camera won't catch on. Things like this tech don't catch on until they're built into products. And um, you know, I like to put it like this. Um, you might want to wait for eight. Um, what did I say? I didn't say anything. I said wait for eight. If you know what eight is, then uh, you know what eight is. I'm talking about the Schmiphone eight. Uh, because imagine if you can blend the selfie camera and the back camera together and do that built in instead of needing an extra piece of tech on there, which is really quite cool. Now, another thing I want to talk about is something that's actually kind of interesting and very dear and near to my heart is actually... Uh, Fitness trackers, step trackers, smart watches, scales, different things like that. My mom is in the midst of, she just finished redoing her bathroom. She started redoing my bathroom at, at home. And one of the interesting things about, uh, about the bathrooms is she got a tile that went in the bathroom that was actually a scale. Oh my God. Yes, I don't know why you would want that. but uh, <laughs> I don't know why you'd want that. Now, I have the predecessor to that which is my scale right here. It's from a company called Withings, W-I-T-H-I-N-G-S, and it is a Wi-Fi connected scale. So you can get on and be shamed by your scale every single day. Now, I used to be 250 pounds. Now I'm under 200 pounds, to give you an idea there. But I use this to actually track, because if you don't track, you don't really figure out what's going on. So I want to show you how some of this works. Let me go ahead and go into my scale real quick. So I can look at, oh god, this is bad, uh, 196.9 pounds, which is a BMI of 29.1. When I wake up every morning on port days only, because you can't do it on sea days, because the weight's not accurate on sea days, at least that's what they say, uh, you can't do it on sea days, but on port days only, I go, I stand on the scale, and it tracks my weight over time. Now, I want to show you my weight over time so you can see this, because I think it's interesting. Boom. Now, I want to point something out about weight over time, though. Do you see, this is, you're not going to like what I'm about to say. You see this drop right here? 
You see that spike right there? That's the Oasis of the Seas beverage packet. <laughs> Be careful what you drink. You're like, oh, I'm eating healthy. I've got chicken and I've got fried. I got chicken and I have seven Long Island iced teas a day. Just because liquor's clear doesn't mean it's calorie free. That's what I used to say. I was like, oh, the clear liquor doesn't have any calories in it. That's not big Russians. Uh, so I started drinking vodka. But uh, the cool thing is, this automatically tracked my weight over time. I mean, this is when I, you see bottom, you see bottom, and it tracks it over time. It automatically now tells you your weight, tells you your BMI, tells you your body fat, uh, your, your muscle mass, your hydration, the temperature of the room you're in, and the air quality, all in a scale. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And then what you can also do is the same company called Withings, Withings, however you pronounce it, also makes a blood pressure monitor. That you can go and you can monitor your blood pressure because I actually, uh, about two years ago, I was denied coming back on a ship because my cholesterol and my blood pressure were too high. So I started going to the gym. And before I went to the gym, I had some guy named James come see me every day, so the gym came to me. But, uh, but now, uh, now I go to the gym each day, I track a lot of what I do, and a really cool app, what I think was cool about this app, on our Transatlantic, which happened about a month ago, I was teaching this app, and someone comes up to me in the eye lounge and goes, are you Richard? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes, my husband actually made that app. Oh I'm like, hmm, that's, that's pretty cool. Her husband was on board. He made the app, and that was her husband. It's a really cool app. It's called Deadline, D-E-A-D-L-I-N-E. I need someone with a good sense of humor before I say what this app does. I've got to be good at sense of humor. I think, I think, I think you guys are going to be It tells you exactly when you're going to die. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 uh, what's your birthday? Um, March. March. No, March what day? March 17, yeah. March 17, 1943. What's your diet like? Normal, not so healthy, very healthy? Not so healthy, thank you for being honest. Smoking? No? No, no. Uh, booze? Oh, yeah, well, on board. One or two a day? A little on board. Let's see what his graph will show. Uh, did your parents live a long, healthy life? Family have problems? Uh, long, healthy life, yeah. Okay. Uh, exercise? Uh, you don't eat healthy. I'm sure you exercise really well. Uh, exercise often very active or rarely exercise? Middle one. Exercise often, okay. Stress, this is the last one. Always calm, normal, dealing with it, or freaking out? Normal. It says your friend will live to be around 86 years old. Right. Now what's cool is there's a button that says, send him a card to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Happy holidays, you're going to die by 86. <laughs> 56 more of them left. Wait, did I type in something incredibly wrong here? What year did I put him there? He's got 50, well, I typed in 43. Wow, you're going to live a long time. Uh, but it's actually going to tell you all of these different variables, all these different factors. I don't know what happened there. Your friend will live to be around 86. Okay. But we go in, and what's interesting is this tracks all of your information. It says I'm going to live to be around 93. Now, before I started working out, before I was... Really fast. It said I was going to live to be 65. Mm -hmm. And what's cool is I actually have a nice little countdown clock that tells me I have 62 years, 0 months, 8 days, 10 hours, 23 minutes, and 8 seconds left to live. <laughs> because Copenhagen coming up is my birthday, so I'm going out in Copenhagen for my birthday. But uh, I will be turning 29 for the second time on June 1st. And the year after, I'll be turning 29 for the third time. I'm never allowed to turn more than 29 because then that means you're in the decline. No, I mean, uh, no. <laughs> but here's the cool thing. So that's an app. It's called Deadline. But I want to show you an app that I think we will all really need. And I want to find something. Where the heck are you? Uh, this is my commercial break. But I'm going to show you something cool. So this is my commercial break. Okay. I want to show you a great app called Google Photos. It's something we're going to be talking about a bit later in the cruise. But this is a great app called Google Photos. Yeah. Okay. Right yes. Alright, take a picture this time, right? One, two, three. Ah, I missed it. Do it again. Ready, set, go!
It's not. Some of the people in this room have taken my Google Photos class before. We've got one, two, we've got a couple of them that have taken it. It is life-changing in dealing with your photos and videos. You will never have to worry about running out of space again. No matter which device you grab, be it your iPhone, your iPad, your Android tablet, whatever device you go ahead and grab, you're going to have all of your pictures across that device, which is what's really cool. And I'm going to give you the concept. I've got my phone right here. I have 8,000 pictures on my phone. Very fortunately, I have a 256 gig phone. But if how many of you have a 16 gig phone? <coughs> Everyone probably has a 16 gig phone or a 32 gig phone. And you're taking a picture. What's cool is in Google Photos, I can hit the button that says free up space. It will find items that have already been backed up and it'll say, do you want to remove 8,880 items that have already been backed up to your device? And you can say, Remove and those photos still remain in the cloud, but they're not on your device anymore. But here's where it starts to get really cool. Not only will it free up your space, what's very cool that it will do is it will allow you to actually search your photos as well. So I'm going to show you this. I need to open up my Google Photos. I always do this really randomly. And I'm going to open up the Google Photos website. And what's cool is these are my pictures. I have over 500,000 pictures and videos, including Remember the two I just took? <laughs> I have over 500,000 pictures and videos, including the two I just took, backed up and available from every device, such as a picture I took of, give me something random I might have taken a picture of at some point in time. A train, I like it. I'm not sure what's going to come up, but if I type in train, it should find all the pictures I've ever taken of a train. Now this is Google doing this, and it's automatically searching through 500,000 pictures, and I don't know what's about to come up here. Oh look, there's a train, there's a train, there's a subway train, there's another train, there's another train, there's a choo-choo train, there's a monorail, they're all technically types of trains, and I've actually got all of those trains, I've got the train from Tivoli Gardens, actually something I would highly recommend you do. You'll see me there, because I'm going there on my birthday. It's in Tivoli Gardens. If any of you have never been there before, you've never been to Tivoli Gardens before? It's in Copenhagen. They have the world's second oldest operating roller coaster, which actually has a guy that drives the roller coaster on the roller coaster. <laughs> it's got a guy that drives the roller coaster on the roller coaster. It's the world's, you don't want to be on the first oldest operating roller coaster, because I don't find that one to be very safe. But it's got a guy that actually drives the roller coaster on the roller coaster. And I can look at this throughout all of my pictures. So not only can I free up the space, but I've got all of these pictures across all of my devices available and accessible anywhere. <coughs> on this cruise, we're also going to my absolute favorite port ever, which is, anyone want to take a guess? No, I don't. What? Estonia. My favorite port is Estonia, Tallinn, Estonia. And uh, a little note about Estonia, it's actually the birthplace of Skype. A lot of people don't know that. That's where Skype was born. It was in Tallinn, Estonia. And they actually call it the Silicon Valley of Europe. Because a lot of big tech companies are based out of Tallinn, Estonia. But my absolute favorite place is Tallinn, Estonia. And one of my favorite places in Tallinn, Estonia is a very interesting restaurant called Ode Hansa. And if you've never been, I, mm, I love that place. I'm so excited to go out there. I wish my birthday was in Tallinn, but it's not. Uh, but... This is their, um, what is this? This is the uh, apple cake, and it's got actually like an apple batter you put over it. My favorite thing about this restaurant is they have no electricity. <laughs> Everything is done by fire. All the lights are done by candlelight. It is a traditional medieval, like it was a couple hundred years ago. It's absolutely amazing. I love medieval times. I was sitting there last year, the guy comes up to the waiter. Remember, this restaurant doesn't have any electricity. He goes, you have a Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> the waiter then comments back to the guy, how do you create light with no heat? Because he had light, but he had no heat. 
when he started off, he fell ahead. It was just so fun to watch the graduates go out, and it was so great. Uh, it's actually called Ole Hansen, and uh, they have some tours that go there, or you can go there on your own, but I highly recommend. But not only can I do that, I can type in Estonia Richard, and they'll find pictures of me in Estonia, which is, when I went to Estonia, I was dating a girl at the time that needed some new clothes, so I was the clothing rack. Uh, that's true. Uh, but this is myself in Ole Hansen. This is myself getting my head chopped off. Yeah. But it's actually automatically identified me over time, which was really quite cool. So it can actually identify myself over time. It can identify all these different things over time, over all these different variables. It's identified Richard. It's done all those different things. Our first class on Google Photos is going to be at 3.30 today. It's an hour and a half just on Google Photos, on how to back up your pictures, on how to do all those other things. Every single C day at 1 o'clock, we will be meeting, meeting in here. I'll let you know what's going on. So tomorrow is going to be on the camera, on your smartphone and tablet, so you can take better pictures when you're out in St. Petersburg. Don't worry, everything's gold there. You know, you know I've done that before. Uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, so St. Peter, so we're going to be taking a look at that one uh, in uh, tomorrow's class. And then after St. Petersburg, we're going to be talking about apps. So before we get to Berlin, we're going to be talking about apps, all the different apps that you can get on your phone or tablet. Uh, and we're going to be talking after that about the cloud. And then last but not least, we're going to be talking about Gmail. Now, I want to end on a note that's kind of, And then we also have some other classes. I have all the information. At 3.30, we've got some different series of classes. Those you need to sign up for. I'll have the information on them here. The first one is on Google Photos. I will touch on Google Photos in our cloud class, but I won't go nearly as far as I'm going. I'm, gonna have, I'm just going to leave these here, and I'll give you the information. There's the first one's at 3.30 today, so we have 1 o'clock in here. You don't need to sign up for those for the remainder of the cruise. And at 3.30, we've got all kinds of different ones. We've got our Google Photos class. We've got a class that's going to be a safari, where I go around. People always look at me like I'm a weirdo. I go around in a safari hat. So we go on a safari. But the last thing I want to address is something that someone sent me the other day that I think the terminology in this is very, very scary. And I wanted to address this because I think it's an interesting terminology. Where is the thing that someone sent me? So someone sent me an email. Uh, let me see if I can find this full screen. I want to talk about this because uh, she said, uh, this is someone sent me this uh, yesterday. She said, Richard, as per your prior shipboard lessons, please see the attached communication from Yahoo regarding changes in service. How many of you are still using Yahoo? Let's be honest. Have you not read the news about Yahoo getting hacked left, right, and center? Oh, yeah. yeah? And you still stick around them? That's my throwaway email. It's your throwaway email. Do you use Gmail as a normal email? No, I use Comcraft. Use Comcraft. Okay. Uh, so we'll get into that in a little bit. But I want to show you this because I think this is very important. I need you to understand this. Is she said, per your ship or lectures, please see the attached communication. Now, Yahoo sent out this message to all Yahoo users. If you haven't been online, you might have not seen it. And it says, if you haven't heard, Yahoo plans to sell its operating business to Verizon. Two days. Yeah. You got the email too? Yeah. It's going to sell its Yahoo information, and it's going to occur in June 8th. Effective June 8th, 2017. This is for Yahoo and AOL users. Uh, your, your terms will be updated automatically if you use Yahoo or AOL to Verizon's ownership. Now, there is a 40-page document that tells you the new terms and conditions under this new company that's starting on June 8th. And I want to read you a small subsection from that document. I said, my favorite part. Now, AOL sent the same thing. It says, modifications to Yahoo services. These are the terms and agreements, that the terms and conditions you can agree, you can agree again to. It says, Yahoo reserves the right at any time and from time to time to modify or discontinue temporarily or permanently the Yahoo services or any part thereof with or without notice. You agree that Yahoo shall not be liable to you or any third party for any modification, suspension, or discontinuation of the Yahoo services or any part thereof. That's also in AOL's updated terms and conditions. What do you think is going to happen come June 8th? Yeah. No, you won't. So the thing is, one of the last things we're going to be covering on the last C day is going to be that we're going to be talking about Gmail. You need to get over to Gmail now. If you have Hotmail and you think you're safe, uh, no! <laughs> if you have Comcast and you think you're safe, no, 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 no. The only, you, I mean, you have three choices in email providers. If you want a good email provider, you can either use Gmail, or if you don't want to use Gmail, you can use Gmail. 
Or if you really don't want to use Gmail, you can use Gmail. Uh, that's the, the honest truth behind all of it, uh, is that uh, everyone else is going belly up. And I want to show you this because someone sent me this yesterday, and this is true for AOL as well. They've changed their terms of service that say they can delete everything at any time. You're paying for AOL still. Oh my, we'll have a discussion later. <laughs> AOL's been free for the last 20 years. Uh, <laughs> FYI, uh, I had AOL Web 11. Uh, but that's a story for another day. We can talk uh, fine about that. So like I said, we've got a bunch of stuff coming up. We'll even have some things on the court evenings, on the Apple TV, uh, some different things like that. But uh, we do have at 1 o'clock every day. Today was just an intro class. At 1 o'clock every C day, we're going to be in here talking about some big topics. And then at 3.30, starting today, we have our Google Photos class. Uh, tomorrow, we have our Safari class. Uh, then we're going to be taking a look at advanced smartphone tips and advanced smartphone apps, as well as the last class we're going to take a look at on the last C day in the smaller group is other stuff that Google does, like YouTube, like Google Play Music, Google Maps, different things like that. I want to leave you with one more app that I forgot to tell you about. Here's an app I highly recommend you all download, especially if you're going to go out and port. It's called Maps.me. It's a free application. I just started using this. Maps.me. It's available on iPhone, on iPad, on Android, and any other devices like that. And what it is, is it is offline GPS that works in airplane mode. So it's offline GPS that works in airplane mode. What you need to do though, you'll download it and then you need to zoom in on a city and it'll ask if you want to download that city. So the next, so where are we in the next one? Sweden. Uh, S-T-O-C-K, H-R-L-M, yeah, we're in Stockholm. So I hit on Stockholm. It's going to give me a big map of Stockholm, but when I zoom in on Stockholm, it's going to say, Stockholm, Sweden, do you want to download the map? I say download the map and I have offline GPS. When you get off the ship, you can mark where the ship is. You can walk, or even if you take the shuttle into Stockholm, let's say you're taking the shuttle into Stockholm, you mark the Opera House where it, lock, where it drops you off. You can walk around, and it will navigate you on foot back to the location, tell you how many minutes away you are and everything like that. I did not start using this application until three days ago. My assistant was always using it on the front. I'm like, hey, Melinda, well, I'll use Google Maps. He's like, boss, boss, maps me. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. He's like, maps me. I'm like, yeah, I have Google Maps. What's this maps me crap? Uh, so here's the interesting thing. There are only two five-star apps on the App Store I've ever seen. The first one is Google Photos, and the second one is actually Maps Me. I've never seen this before, but what I can do is I can, what is it asking me to do? Continue downloading your current location. Oh, it thinks I'm in some weird location. It says you're in the middle of the ocean. But the cool thing is this is a fully offline GPS. So some of us will be meeting at 3.30 today. That, those classes, the 3.30 ones, are going to be in the I Lounge on Deck 6. The information is here. I have the sign-up sheet up here. Elsewise, I'll see most of you, if not all of you, at 1 o'clock tomorrow. And how I know that you are here today is I'm going to have people. The first thing we're going to do at 1 o'clock tomorrow is I'm going to say, take a picture of me. Okay? I hope none of you that are here today, I have to walk up to you and say, no! But that's where we're going to start tomorrow is with take a picture of me. And then we're going to go a lot deeper from there, time lapses, slow motions, all kinds of other things like that. Tomorrow, bring your device with you. It's a very hands-on, on your device class. If you have a phone or a tablet or anything like that. For today, my name is Richard. This has been Let's Talk Tech. I think we talk tech. Bye!